Right. Uh, so welcome everyone to the Schubert seminar. Uh, today we're happy to have the Ping Wang from UC Davis telling us about cluster structure for Legendian links. Please. Yeah, thanks for the, yeah, thanks for the introduction and thanks for the invitation uh, for me to speak at this seminar. Yeah, so today I will talk about uh, cluster structures for uh, Legendian links. And the main uh, references are two papers that I, I wrote uh, jointly with uh, Hong Hao Gao and Li Shen, another one with uh, uh, Roger Casals. Um, so here's the plan of today's talk. Um, I was told that uh, the first half should be uh, accessible to graduate students. So I'm going to give some backgrounds on uh, Lagrangian links and their exact Lagrangian feelings, and also um, define um, the main object of study for uh, today's talk, the flag moduli space. And then I'm uh, going to move on to uh, the third and the fourth part, which are uh, a bit technical, so there will be lots of details omitted. Uh, but if you're interested, I'm more than happy to uh, discuss afterward or, uh, or over Zoom at some other uh, time. Um, yeah, and the, the main goal is to, to talk about this uh, feeling uh, cluster correspondence. Okay, so without further ado, uh, let me begin. Uh, and also at any point, if I know my handwriting is not <laughs> perfect, if there's anything that's not clear, or you, you have a question, please feel free to interrupt and ask the question. I'm more than happy to elaborate. Okay, um, so Legendian links and exact Lagrangian feelings. So here's the definition. Uh, a Legendian link is a link in R3 uh, with coordinates x, y, z, satisfying the equation that y is dz over dx. Okay, given this condition, you can project the link onto the xz plane and the, co the y coordinate can be recovered by computing the slope. So for example, if you see a crossing on the xz plane projection, you can compute the slope, and you know that this one has a positive slope, and this one has a negative slope. And if you pull out your right hand, you know that the y-axis is pointing into the paper. So the positive slope should be behind the paper, and the negative slope should be above the paper. So you're going to see a crossing like this. Okay. So any crossing on the xz projection, it's always going to be like this uh, in reality. Okay. And also because y is the slope, so when you project onto the xz plane, you cannot have this kind of vertical tangent. Right? You know that if you have a vertical tangent, the slope is infinite. Right? That's not allowed. So typically, you're going to see uh, this kind of cusp returns. Right? So you have this one. One, and then on the right, you're going to have something like this. And uh, in the 3D picture, it's more like this with the horizontal tangent here. But then this tangent is actually along the y-axis. So when you project, you're not going to see anything. You're going to see this kind of cusp here, but it's not really a cusp. It's still smooth. The length is still smooth. Okay, So this is some typical features of Legendian links. Right? So therefore, when I draw its projection on the xz plane, I do not really need to specify the crossings and uh, all the returns are gonna be, uh, don't look like this kind of cusps. Okay, so now let me introduce you a big family of Legendian links called minus one closures uh, of a positive braid. So what a positive braid is, so a braid is a braiding of strands and positive means that all crossings of the same form. Okay, so for example, here's a positive braid. Just gonna show some random example. So this is a braiding of three strands, and you see that at all crossings, it's always this kind of positive crossing. Okay. So it's called positive braid. And uh, the minus one closure is the following. So I'm going to take a copy of this. And then I'm going to close it up like this. So remember, I have to do it with cusps. It's going to look something like this. So it's called a minus one closure of, uh, of, of beta. This is going to be lambda sub beta. Okay. So 
the on the on both on the two sides you're gonna see um cusp that's um going along so the lowest strand is gonna have the lowest strand here the next one is gonna correspond to the next one and then so on so you're gonna close it like like this um there'll be a another closure that sometimes I'm going to mention in the talk it's called a rainbow closure uh, and the difference between a rainbow closure uh, and the minus one closure is the following so the rainbow closure of a braid let me also put it here Ooh. good news is that I can string this a bit so rainbow closure looks something more like this I'm gonna when I close it up, I close it up like this. They call rainbow closure. Okay, um, it's I'm gonna mention it at some point, uh, but just keep in mind that all rainbow closures are minus one closures, uh, as we will see uh, using by the Meister moves. Oh, rainbow closures are minus one closures. So minus one closures are more general. Any questions so far? All right. So next, um, since the Legendre links has this additional tangential condition, right? The right and Meister moves, you have to also modify. Right? We know that two links are the, are the same, are considerably the same if you can transform one into the other using Rydermeister moves. So for Legendrian links, there are also three Rydermeister moves, and they kind of look kind of similar to the ordinary Rydermeister moves. So the first Rydermeister moves looks like the following. So you can create uh, this kind of uh, twist above or, or below, up, which direction is up to you. Oops. So this is a Rider Meister one. And for Rider Meister two, uh, you can pass a cusp through another strand with a bigger or small, much bigger or much smaller slope. Right? So for example, this strand is a, is a it has a very negative slope. Right? So I can pass this cusp through. So this is the same as something like this. Okay. You can always pass cusp through a strand that's more negative or very positive. And randomizer three is the same as before. It is just like that. Oop, not this one. This is the same as before. Like this. So this is randomizer three. So any Legendre links that can be related by these randomizer moves are Legendre isotopic to each other, and we consider them the same link. Any question? All right. Okay. So now we talk about we have talked about links, uh, which are one-dimensional objects. So now let's move one dimension up and talk about the uh, fillings, uh, exact Lagrangian fillings. So let lambda be a Legendre link, right? So a Legendre link, remember, it's in R three. So I'm going to place uh, R three as the boundary as t goes to infinite infinity in R four. So here I have a symplectic R four x y z t, and I view R three as the asymptotic boundary at t go, as t goes to infinity. And suppose I have a link there, an exact Lagrangian filling is an exact Lagrangian surface in this symplectic R four that asymptotically tends to lambda as t goes to infinity, right? So for example, it may look something like this. So this is an exact Lagrangian filling of, uh, an idea of an exact Lagrangian filling of, of the link. Uh, I should also explain what exact means. So exact means that, uh, so first we have a symplectic form, which is the 
uh, differential of uh, Liouville form, one form, and exact means that the Liouville form is exact on, on the surface. Okay. So that's what, what exact Lagrangian is. So Lagrangian means that it's half dimensional, right? So R4, half dimensional is, is two dimensional, so surfaces, and, and, um, and the sympathetic form vanishes along that surface. That's what Lagrangian means. And exact means that the Liouville form is exact. Okay. Um, and a theorem of Shan Train uh, proved that all orientable exact Lagrangian fillings of the same link, of the same Legendian link, have the same genus. Okay. So this is quite typical, uh, quite special for Legendian links. So for, for topological links, the, the filling, the genus of the of filling can always increase. You can always at handle attachment to increase the, the genus of, of feelings. Uh, but that's not true for uh, exact Lagrangian feelings of, for sim, of sympathetic, sorry, of uh, Legendian links. So all, all links have the same genus. So topologically, you cannot really differentiate them. So how do we, dif how do we differentiate them? So we differentiate them uh, up to what's called Hamiltonian isotopy. And the reason is that uh, this ex these exact Lagrangian fillings actually defines uh, objects in the Rack Fukaya category of the of the R four, okay. And this is some something that people care a lot in mirror symmetry, uh, but I'm not going to dive uh, into this in, in today's talk. Um, but two exact, but keep in mind that two exact Lagrangian fillings define the same object if they are Hamiltonian isotop isotopic. So what this means is that uh, there's a Hamiltonian function right, such that uh, it's Hamiltonian flow uh, moves uh, one to the other. That's what what Hamiltonian isotopic means. So it is a, it's an isotopy generated by a Hamiltonian flow. Okay. Um, all right. So 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 far, um, there are very little is proved about classification of uh, exact Lagrangian fillings of for Lagrangian links. Uh, the only Lagrangian link with a complete classification uh, is the max TB a knot. So. It's a knot that looks like this. Okay. So that's the, the only the only link that we have a full classification of uh, exact Lagrangian fillings. And the classification is kind of boring. It says there's only one uh, exact Lagrangian filling, and it's what you think it and, and that's what you think it should be. It's, it's a bow. Right? So it's it's a disk that's attached to this uh, a knot. It's proved by Ilyashford and Podorovich. Okay, all right. So, so this is quite hard question. Um, there's also related um, conjecture called the infinitely many filling conjecture. Right. So, it's more about the lower bound of number of fillings for a Legendian link. Right. So the question is: Does there exist a Legendian link with infinitely many non-Hamiltonian isotopic exact Lagrangian fillings? So this question remains open uh, for a long time until uh, the year 2020, right, where, when everybody was locked down, uh, locked, locked in, indoor by COVID. And um, then three groups uh, kind of overlapped, but uh, we use slightly different methods, uh, prove this result uh, in the same year. So in January, uh, Roche Cassels and Hong Hao Gao, they proved it uh, uh, for the Taurus links case. Uh, in July, uh, Roger Casals and Eric Zaslow uh, proved it for three-stranded uh, break closures. And later in September, uh, Hong Hao, Gao, Lin Hui Shen, and I proved it for rainbow closures of positive braids. And all three approaches uh, used cluster theory um, in, in some way. And, and this shows the power of this connection between cluster algebra and and and, legend, and the study of Legendian links, and uh, so today I, this is going to be the result that uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, and also 
I, I should mention that uh, one and this last result actually covered the first two uh, cases as well. Uh, in in uh, in this paper, uh, we gave a a sort of a classification. We divide uh, positive braids into two families, infinite type and finite type, and we prove that for anything in the infinite type, they all have infinite many fillings. All right, before we move on to uh, the, the second part, are there any questions? The break is after the second part, but you're free to ask questions now. We're good. All right. So now uh, let's talk about some geometry, uh, flat moduli spaces. So this is, uh, so what is a flag? Uh, a flag in CN is a nested chain of vector subspaces. Uh, so zero being smallest vector subspace in some F1, in some F2, and so on, all the way to Fn being the full space such that each and the case step, the dimension of the vector subspace is K. Okay. And the reason it's called flag is because if you think of a flag in uh, the, the starting point of flag is a point contained inside a line and then contained inside a plane. So you see a flag right there. Okay. That's why flags are called flags. Uh, but of course, if you in keep increasing in dimension, then, then it no longer looks like a, a flag that we know, but it's still called flag. Okay, so uh, given two flags, we're gonna talk about their relative position. Um, the relative position between two flags are encoded by uh, permutations. Um, but the simplest kind of relative position is when the two flags only differ at a single step. So here, um, I'm gonna give two examples. So these are gonna be uh, flags in C3. Okay, so a flag in C3 is gonna be uh, a point, which is the origin, contained in a line, contained in a plane, and then contained in C3. And we write that two flags are of relative position one. That means that the only subspace that they differ is the one-dimensional subspace. So the two flag looks like this. So you have, so they share the same plane. And then maybe one flag has this, uh, one dimensional line and this one has this one dimensional line. So these two flags will be of right to position one. So, so one of the flag is the point contained in the line contained the plane. And then the other flag is the point contained the line contained the plane. So you see that the two flags share the same plane and the same point, but have different lines. Versus if you have two flags, the relative position two, that means that they share the same line, but they have different planes. So one flag may have a plane that's like this. Another flag may have a plane that's like this. Okay. So that's, and then the, of course there's the, ori there's the point in the origin. Right? So the one flag is gonna be a point containing the line, containing the plane. And then the other flag is a point containing a line, containing the plane. And you see that the two flags share the same point, the same line, but have different planes. So these are the relative, the simplest kind of relative positions. So, and they have diff, they have the same three dimensional space. Yes, yes, in their flags in C three. Yes. Yeah. Good. So thing. the, the oh, three dimensional oh, space. Okay. Yes. Right. But of course, if you are in higher CN, then you could have more choices. So you can have position one, two, all the way up to N minus one. Thanks for the question. All right. So now uh, I can define the, the main focus of today's talk, the flat moduli space. So let beta, uh, I1, I2, so these are, this tells you where the crossings is. Right? So, so for example, right? Braid that we had before. Remember, maybe this one. So if, if I want to write this braid in, in this form, then I'll, I'll write it so write it as uh, two, one, two, one, one, two, right? Because it's just crossing at the second level, first level, second level, first, first, 
second. Um, let me think. I probably want to call it the other way around, but uh, sorry. Let me, let me, let me, let me write it like one, two, one, two, two, one. Maybe I, I prefer this way. So, so I'm going to call, call this level one and this level two. So, so this is level one, two, one, two, two, one. So I can recall the braid like a positive braid like this. This is a positive braid of, with n strengths. Then the flat borderized space M of beta is defined to be the space right, where you have a bunch of flags, uh, F0, that's I1 from F1. That's I2 from F2 and so on, all the way to uh, n minus one, so L minus one, used L, uh, I sub L minus one. And then the last I sub L, I'm gonna go back to F zero. Okay. So this is a cyclic chain. So I start with F zero and then I end at F zero again. And all these are flags in, in CN. So these are flags in CN satisfying this relative position condition. And I'm gonna quotient out by the diagonal GLN action. So GLN acts on CN, so it moves flags around. So there's a simultaneous action on all flags. And then we're quotient out by this action. It's called a the flag moduli space. And let me point out that the flag moduli space is actually a Legendian link invariant of lambda beta of this minus one closure of beta. This, so it, the reason is because it is a moduli space of simple objects in the Kashwara Shapira category of constructible sheaves with micro local support along uh, lambda beta. So uh, I'm not going to dive into the definition of this category, uh, just treat it as a black box, but let me, uh, let me emphasize that this is a, a Legendian link invariant. So it is. Uh, quite a, a meaningful object to consider. Uh, any question about the definition of flat moduli space? Can you remind us what was lambda beta? Yeah, lambda beta is you take uh, the braid beta and then you right. do the minus one closure. So it looks something like this. Yep. Yep, and then you. draw it up here. Yes, no problem. Something like this. So this is a lambda beta. All right, so this is the part uh, when I designed the break is, or the break is uh, here. Uh, we should take a five minutes break or something? Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah let's take uh, six minutes breaks actually until uh, five o'clock. So it's four yeah. right now. Sounds good. <laughs> 